Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back here visiting and seeing what we're up to. And so in today's video, I am bringing you some of my thrift flips. These are some larger items. So we got some cubbies, some little cabinets, and some wall decor. So stay tuned to see what I do to these items to get them ready to resell and how I share the process and what I do with these items with you all. So did you all just recently see this one in one of my recent Thrift With Me thrift hauls? It was a $19 price tag, but oh my goodness, that heavy wrought iron, I just could not pass it up. Somebody thought maybe it was a longing burger, but I did not see any markings whatsoever. I just knew that I could make all that detail pop. So I had this in my hoard and I actually forgot about it when I was doing a recent mirror makeover for you all here on the channel. I'm like, oh my gosh, this one got tucked away and I definitely think this is a beauty. And then I was just recently given this piece to make over by a sweet, I'm gonna call them a friend because they have shopped at the Ginger Chick since we started our home sales. And then my next four pieces are some storage. I love when I run across storage, any kind of extra storage. Don't you just in your home need little places to tuck things? And I know as we all talk about the prices, yeah, this one was a 1009, but I couldn't help myself because it was just too cute. Look at that. Just some extra little storage that you could tuck away. And then um, it I think it's painted on or maybe a paper. I'm not too sure. And then this one I just shared just like that other first piece was with a thrift with me. Oh, yes. I absolutely love the size of this one. And this one is nice and clean in the inside also. Now, I know that is definitely paint on the outside of the door, but I can sand that off. No problems there, but look at so cute. Now this one, uh, I couldn't help the $5 price tag. It's just a nice little cubby box. It's got some overly textured paint on it, that crackle. You can really feel the paint, but some nice storage and some nice places for your decor. And then who couldn't use a set of three little boxes with some extra decor on the top? Well, let's get right into getting these pieces clean, getting these pieces taken apart, removing any of the hardware, any of the tags, just getting them properly prepped so they'll be ready to paint. Sometimes when you're removing a tag, sometimes that sticky just gets left behind. So just a little bit of an essential oil. I haven't really noticed that you need a certain fragrance. <laughs> it just all kind of works. Some Goo Gone probably does the same thing, or maybe if I would have used the heat gun to um, take that off. But sometimes you just need to go back in with a little bit of oil to get that residue off. Now, as I'm cleaning these, I'm like, oh, somebody's got some red paint on the back of this. If not, this this piece was already going to have bleed through problems anyway, just the age and the kind of the way that they stained it back in the day. So I'll deal with that later. And I always find it funny and maybe you do too, or maybe you think I'm crazy, but I'm like, how is this little hanger going to hang this box? And then you put anything in it and it's going to stay on your wall. So I'm gonna get this one to sand it off. This is definitely raised and bumpy. You could feel that paint. So if you paint over it, you're going to see the whole, the whole image underneath your paint job. So I'm just going in with some 220 sandpaper. I don't need to be aggressive with it. I just need to get it nice and smooth. But I'm gonna pretty much take most of the image off. This piece has so much texture and so much crackle on it. I just wanna have a smoother finish at the ends. So I do get the Black & Decker sander out that I can get into that little mouse sander that has a little bit of corners so I can try to get a little bit closer. I don't think that this saying is raised, but just for my protection, because sometimes I feel, I felt that it hasn't been raised, but then I go to paint and all of a sudden I can see that complete image. So I'm just gonna take that orbital sander while I have it out, just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. For this shelf, it has some of that manufacturer's top coat that's coming off. And so I don't know why I started to sand it with the 
wrought iron attached <laughs> sometimes you're like you're just in the motion and you're sanding away and you're like hey i need to remove that i can't really date when this happened i know i saw used to see a lot of these pieces at craft shows back in the day this pine furniture and the way that they nailed them in you can see those holes nail holes and it's not bad when it's the natural but when I go to paint it it just looks like you were missing paint so I need to go in with a little bit of spackle a little bit of wood filler and fill in those holes why I have that spackle out I'm gonna go ahead and this whole thing is cracked when I I didn't really notice it when I purchased it but when I went to sand it and then I took well, right off the bat, when I took the knob off, that was just kind of glued on there. Um, I noticed that it was cracked all the way across, so I'm just going to fill that in with some of the spackle also. And just a quick sanding to anything that I had used the spackle on now that it has dried. And now I can really go in and clean them a little bit better. I started to clean them at first and then they all seem to be kind of needy. I don't know, sometimes it just happens. I got overzealous, I guess, of starting to get the water out and get the items cleaned. And I'm like, oh, I got to take tags off. I got to take hardware off. I got to fill in holes. And so now I can get them all clean up. Some of these pieces, after they were drying for me cleaning, I'm not going to paint certain areas of these. I don't think it's, I think it's cost efficient for me to use this Dollar Tree contact paper and some of my tape just to tape off the features. I like that wood feature, even though it's the back of the piece, I want to make sure that it stays clean. I'm going to be spraying these pieces, so I'm just going to go ahead and take the time to tape off some of those areas. So that way you have to decide, is it worth your time to tape off and cover up with contact paper or is it worth your time to spend the money on a little extra paint to cover that it's just whatever you feel but I just like sometimes even though it's the back those little features of wood that makes it pretty I know we're not quite ready to get these all painted up yet I still got a little bit of more problems to tackle so I'm going in with some slack on this board I really had to go to town to get that texture off and now I've gone through some of the veneer board that was on there and so I've really got some uneven textures some of it is the MDF board so to even out the porosity of this piece so where the paint will take evenly I'm going in with a couple coats of shellac and to prevent me from having a problem child after I get it all painted up, I already knew that this type of piece, because there's no top coat sealing that stain in that I would bleed through my white paint at the end. And especially, I know whatever, whatever red this is, I know it's the back of the piece, but I like all my piece to be good. So I'm going to go in the same thing with a couple coats of shellac to seal that in. I have that shellac drying. I'm going to go ahead and do some of my two big pieces. Oh, yeah, they're going to be hard to touch, hard to move. I can't really carry them in and out of spray room on a board, so I'm kind of going to have to just let them sit on there. And this wrought iron is heavy. So I know you're probably like, it's already black, Yvonne. What are you doing? There's just a different way that an item distresses finishing off an item. And I know it's kind of that airy area of trying to cover up that. <laughs> yeah, you waste a lot when you're doing these kind of pieces, but it's well worth the time to give it a new coat of black spray paint. When it came to this piece, you noticed that I didn't do any sanding on it. That is actually a paper, so I am not going to mess with it. What I actually did do is, I forgot to film it, is I actually sealed it in with shellac. That way it's not so papery, and it's filled in, the porosity is filled in with shellac. So when I go do my finished stencil project, whatever I decide at the end to do to it, I don't have to deal with it pulling up. And it's really hard to get, it's underneath the outer edge, so I just left it alone. As much as I would have loved to left the inside of this natural, you can see that they had painted the boards and then put them together. So I'm not taking it apart to paint it. And it was just, oh my gosh, figuring out how to tape the inside of that to save that inside. I really would have loved to, but nope, just going in with some Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black. You can do whatever base paint you want this is just what works for me. I like spraying, especially when I have cubbies like this. And 
Um, I just, my go-to is always just this Rust-Oleum because it does multiple surfaces like wood, metals, glasses, all that kind of stuff. So, and when it comes to spray painting, you just constantly have to be moving that spray can. You want to not be holding it on a certain area for too long. You don't want to have to mess with drifts and runs and having a turntable to turn these pieces and do this 360 of the spray. Whew, it is a time saver and a blessing. And we have a spray room that is ventilated and I'm wearing a mask because you can see those airiness of all that spray paint. You don't want to be breathing that in. You want to get make sure that you are protected. Now that my big pieces are dry with the flat black, I'm going in with some Rust-Oleum in the clear coat and get that black sealed in. So you need something to seal in that Rust-Oleum, that black paint, or when you go to distress it, because I'm going to be distressing these pieces in white, and that white will just turn, will mix with that black and make a gray mucky mess. So I'm getting this sealed in. And after that clear coat is nice and dry, I can flip these over now and repeat the same process on the other side. Luckily, the first spray, you get the most coverage. That's how I always try to work my projects. And that way I have minimal spray at the end. My next spraying of this big beast of wall decor is I needed to get at a couple different angles. It was okay the first coat to go ahead on the back and get that covered, but I definitely need to get some of the angles. The metal on this is a rusty in color and actually kind of rusty. So I'm, I needed to be able to spin it and get it at some angles, but I need to definitely be the last thing I was spray painting black so that I could let it just sit here because I wasn't going to try to move it after I got it painted. And then, yep, if you're wondering, yep, after that black is dry on the other side, is sealing it in with some clear coat also. I would say it takes me maybe a couple cans of the black, depending, and maybe a half a can of the clear. It's just if you're constantly moving that spray can, can around, you're definitely getting the, the a lot of the product all over. And then being able to spin it definitely helps too. And for the little bit of hardware that I have, I'm just going to go in with that same Rust-Oleum spray paint. It's Give them a nice fresh coat of black and seal those in with a top coat also. So now everybody's all painted. They are getting dry. And yeah, I did not paint the underneath of that cabinet black. I'm still going to paint it white, but I wasn't going to worry because you're not really going to see that too awful much when I about the distressing. But oh, they're all a nice and painted. And so now I'm going to go in with my Rust-Oleum and my True Coat sprayer, my 360. I'm absolutely loving the sprayer. Yes, I do use it two-handed. Um, it isn't that it's heavy. I just have, I just like to be able to control it a little bit better. And this is just the way I spray. So yes, this 360 of being able to spray with Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Oh my goodness. It just devours these pieces. And then I did go in with two coats of the white, making sure that everything was nicely covered. And then after the white is dry, I'm flipping them over and I'm going to proceed to finish up what didn't get painted in the first round. So to distress these pieces, I'm just going in with some 220 sandpaper on all the edges, anywhere there's a sharp point. Now chalk paint, this chalk paint can be water distress, but I'm choosing to use some sandpaper on all these edges. Just a little bit more of a control. I don't want to go all the way necessarily down to the wood. I'm just going to do a light touch so I just show off these details and show that black that we spent the time to spray paint underneath. Definitely want to go around that edge where I had taped off. You always get that hard, crusty edge of where the paint has built up and left it nice and rough. So I want to make sure when I'm sanding to remove that and get that nice and smoothed out. 
And then even though this chalk paint and spraying it on just leaves a very nice smooth texture, I just still like to go in and make sure that with that 220 sandpaper that everything is nice and smooth while well, I'm in there distressing it anyway. I really would like to say when you're spraying these kind of cubbies that that spray gets in there. Yeah, sometimes you do have to go back in with just a paintbrush and hand spray it. If you try to fill that up with a sprayer, a lot of times what happens is it just ends up pooling. The paint doesn't dry properly. You get drips and runs anyway. So I just let it get the most that it can. And then I just go back in and do a couple coats by hand with a brush. For my metal pieces, I am going in with a wet wipe and water distressing these. If I take sandpaper to metal, a lot of times you just go right down to the metal. And so that's not what I want to see. I want to see that black underneath. So I'm just going in with all those sharp edges. Yep, this is going to take a little bit of time because there's a lot of detail. So I just go in with that wet wipe that's wet. I rinse it off a couple times, making sure that I get all the edges. And then I take a dry paper towel in case there's any, like, sometimes you get that gray from where it's, watery I want it to look more black and then I just wipe off the excess water. Now that I've got them touched up, I've got them sanded, I got them distressed the way that I want to. Boy, did I create a lot of sanding dust. So I'm going in with my air compressor. You could use a blow dryer or whatever you need to get any of that dust. Get, get it the heck out of here. So when you go in to put your clear coat on to seal this chalk paint in, that, yeah. So before sealing my chalk paint in, I got to make sure that the inside or where I left it natural is nice and cleaned up. So I'm just taking a wet wipe around any of the edges that left any of that pottery substance behind because I'm not going to be taping it off to seal this in with clear coat so just in case it goes in I'm going to make sure that that's cleaned up the type of chalk paint that I used needs to be sealed and I'm going to go in and be doing some detailing on these pieces so I want to make sure that the chalk paint is good and on there to stay did add a new hanging system to the back of this huge wall. Some good hangers, and these had that double hanger on both the sides of it. I'm like, uh, no, no, baby, I don't like to deal with that. So I just made sure that I got some of my strong wire out, and where you're hanging it above, that it's not going to show from the front. After getting my shelf back together with this heavy wrought iron piece, I'm going in and finishing up with some Varathane finishing wax. One, I've sealed that chalk paint in with the clear coat, but then the Varathane finishing wax also seals in chalk paint too. So just in case I didn't get some area sprayed or I just like that really nice feeling that it leaves. It leaves just a nice, smooth, silky feeling. I have one more step that I have to do before I can add any detail to these pieces is I got to get the hinges put back on them and get them put back together. I'm doing cubbies like this. I actually like to put the hinge back on the door first. That way I have something to hold on to, to the body of the object. That way I see how I can hold that up and it's not <laughs> falling into the cubby hole. Hey, if you made it to this point, thank you. Yep, this is where we get to do some detailing. And part of detailing these pieces is I am using what is in my stash. Before we get into the holiday season, I want to make sure that I'm using all these products that I've already bought that have been in my stash. And some of these water transfers are in my stash and I'm like I need to use them and look at that Godwink moment. And this one is beautiful and it fits perfectly on this little cabinet. These water transfers I got at scrapbook.com. I'll link it down below. And they were less than five bucks. So definitely cost efficient when it comes to furniture transfers. I will state that I don't follow the directions. I have found out I wasted one. I found out, ooh, I don't like to waste product. That if there is a outer paper on here that is a clear and then you need to remember to remove that because if you do not remove that and start adding water to it you it, it's trashed you can't use it again <laughs> it yeah it is what it is but the directions say to immerse it in water for 10 seconds and then transfer it onto your image i find that that makes it for me a hot mess so all i do is get it where i needed to have it centered i took that clear protective coating on the front down and it is now sticky so be very careful as you're trying to center it where you want it to be and then after I feel like I've got it centered to what's pleasing to my eye then I go ahead and rub it down a little bit and so what then what I do is I take a wet wipe and I have it wet and then I just 
wet the back this way. This way I have a little bit more control, I feel. I've had them fold over on me when I tried to immerse the whole thing in water at once. And this is just the process that has worked for me. I love that they're cost efficient, but I didn't really like the directions too much. So you know what? We just figure out what works for us and share it with you all. And as you're wetting it, it starts to pull up that outer paper. It starts to pull away. I give it kind of a 10 second count, make sure that I'm getting that water. I don't want it soaking in water that I have so much to wipe off, but I just kind of get it nice and wet and let it do what it needs to do. And then see how that just automatically just pulls it away but now remember don't touch it too awful much it is nice and wet i do take a paper towel and get any of the water drippings around the outside of the edge but i really try not to touch the image right off bat after i've removed that I do take a little bit of acetone on a cotton ball. And what I'm doing here is there's that square edge that you can see that I transferred this whole image. I just want it to be a little bit more blendy, a little bit more airy, like it's been there for a while. So what this acetone is doing is just taking a little bit of that edging away. I'm not going crazy. I just don't want it to look like sharp lines. So I believe I only had these two water transfers left in my hoard and I absolutely love this butterfly. Oh, it's so the season. So it's still fitting in with that fall, but it's the same water transfer that I used on the first one. Now for me, this is a personal choice. You could have put it on the back of this little shelf. I choose to put it on the drawer. That way it doesn't get covered up and you will get to see it the most. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut it down, which makes me a little bit nervous. So I want to make sure that I'm cutting enough and not cutting it too awful short. But I definitely am testing it out first to make sure that that butterfly is my image that's going to totally fit. So I'm pressing the edges down over the side of the drawer front, making sure that I kind of have a line. So when I use my cutting tool that I can cut a straight line and making sure that that is, I might cut a little bit more just to be on the safe side, but I was making kind of indentation so I knew where to make my cuts. This is that also important step of remembering to remove that clear um, protective coating on the front. And I'm really trying to make sure that I've got it centered before I even touch that wood because yes, it is sticky. So once I feel that I've got it, I just have to commit and lay it down. Now the same thing, I'm just going to do that same where I just take the wet wipe and wet this down. It's, this is just what's easiest for me. If you feel like you can immerse it when you try these, you go ahead and do what's easiest for you. But we all just share our techniques and our little tips with each other. It's the same thing that has that line. I want it to be a little bit more blendy, so I'm going to take some of that acetone. It's just your basic old acetone with some cotton ball. For the detail on this little three cubby drawer box, I'm going in my stash again. I have some Tim Holtz decoupage paper that is, I have none of it left in my booth, so that must mean that people like it. Oh, oh yeah, I remembered I put the knobs in one of those drawers, so found them, know where they are now. So I'm going to go in and use some of this beautiful Tim Holtz flower patterned paper. Oh my gosh, I'm sure you are my regular viewers. You haven't seen me use this before. I got it on Amazon. So I'm testing out which direction. Of course, it would make sense to go this way, but the wording then is sideways. So I'm just, you just kind of have to play around with it a little bit, see what's pleasing to your eye. And then at my final, my finalness was that I just kind of randomly picked some of the flowers out to put on each one of these three drawers. To apply to these drawer fronts, I'm just going to be using some Mod Podge. So just a foam brush and just apply a thin coat on the back of these to lay it down. Now, as you can tell where it distressed, there's a little bit of a raised front. So I'm just going to kind of keep it on that flat area there. Then a couple viewers had directed me to the reclaimed heirloom on YouTube that she had used a saran wrap ball to help even out, stop wrinkles or get less wrinkles on her decoupage paper. So I am trying out the technique to see how it works out for me. So as I'm applying the paper, I am picking out 
that flower. I want the most of the individual flower on the front of these boxes. And I don't know, I'm kind of working with, I find, I guess maybe I, I haven't worked with a little strand wrap enough that it's a little bit on the awkward side for me quite yet, but eh, I'll get the hang of it. But as you see, yep, each one of them is going to have a flower on it. And then I'm going to go back over with another layer of the Mod Podge on the top of this and then set them off to the side to let them dry before trying to remove any of the excess paper. For my next little cubby cabinet, I am going to be using these sunflower stamps by IOD. Oh, I am obsessed with them and apparently my buyers are too. So anything I've been putting them on has been selling really well. So I'm just doing that stamping technique on tissue paper. Using the smallest of the two full sunflowers, I just have it all inked up. I just have Dollar Tree tissue paper. I don't think it matters if it's the shiny side or the dull side. I do have the shiny side down. And then I have it all inked up. I have it on my flexible stamping mount. And then I use that scraping tool from Cricut to make sure that I have my ink evenly distributed and that I am getting the image transferred over. And the nice thing about stamping on tissue paper is you just keep doing it until you get that image that you feel is perfect. Not that I needed four of these stamps, but hey, the paper did four and I can always put two away for a later day. So now I'm just going to go in with a little bit of a paintbrush, this little paintbrush, and then outline this image in water that way that I can tear the tissue paper apart. Tissue paper doesn't really like to cut all that well. So this is, for me, a, that was shared with me, the best way to get your image off this tissue paper. So knowing that this had paper underneath it and I did not want to have to deal with putting any kind of a tape substance, anything that had adhesive that might bring that paper up, even though I tried my best to seal it in, I'm going to treat it just like I did a tray. And I absolutely love these sunflowers on a couple of the Dollar General flips that I did. So I'm like, yep, I'm going to off center a couple of these on the front of this cute little cubby box. Same technique where you just take that thin layer of the Mod Podge and put it down underneath. I'm going to gingerly work that tissue paper into the corner and then when I get to the corner and I ran my fingernail along those seams, I'm going to release that pressure in the corner by cutting a slit back there and then just gingerly working it out with my fingers. I tried the saran wrap, but I guess I'm just a touch and feel kind of girl. And then I'm putting another layer of the Mod Podge on top of it, making sure I get those petals glued down. I'm going to go into that other little corner and do that same exact process. Just, I don't want my flowers overlapping. It's just whatever's pleasing to your eye. It's just enough that you can tell it's a sunflower. You don't necessarily always have to put the whole, whole sunflower on. You just do what's pleasing to your eye. So same thing, just working it in to the corners, releasing that pressure in that main corner, and then rubbing my fingers along the seam, and then making sure my petals are glued in here down and putting some more Mod Podge. And I'll put Mod, the Mod Podge over the entire front just to make sure that it has the same texture. Just like my decoupage paper, I'm gonna sit it off to the side until it is good and dried to cut that excess off. Okay, so what do you guys think? I just happened to be, wasn't quite sure if I was going to put wording on this. So I, yeah, I had those extra sunflowers. So I'm like, hey, I wonder if one of those sunflowers would fit. Though I'm not going to be doing tissue paper on this one. This is a flatter surface. I can, I believe I can do the whole stamp right on to the surface. Even though it makes me a little bit on the nervous side, I think I can do it. So I'm going to get my ink pad re-inked up. I know it's a stays down ink pad, but I bought IOD reinker. I want to make sure that um, I'm going to get a nice, clear, dark image. Let's get this sunflower stamp all inked up. Here was my rookie mistake. What was I thinking? Why didn't I test this out first? I think I didn't test it out first because I knew there might be some ink left over on that from the previous job that I had done. I had not washed it off yet. So I literally took this off of the 
flex vault mount and then I'm like oh that and then you couldn't really rub on it because it's sticky <laughs> so I'm like yeah look at that I could have done it on the corner of it if I would have yeah thought about it but I got I achieved it so yes I was thinking you know it needs a little bit more something on the side I kind of eyeballed the leaves that came with it but they just they didn't they didn't look pleasing to my eye, so I'm going to do a little bit of striping. I know you're all surprised by that, or my regular viewers, but yep, I'm going to do a little bit of striping just not all the way across the sunflower. I just needed to have the tape going all the way across so I can make sure that I am centered. I'm going to be actually laying three pieces of tape, so I'm just eyeballing them, making sure that they're all butted up, they're all centered, and then once I get that third piece of tape, I'm going to remove the middle piece of tape, and that's where my stripe is going to go. And then I'm going to lay another piece of tape, just buttoning it up against the petals, centering it with that first wire basket. That way I have a stopping point of where my stripe is going to. I don't think I'm talented enough to just work right up to those petals. So you'll see me here working out a theory. I'm like, you know what? I'd like to use the stays on ink so because it'll match a little bit better on the image that I transferred over. So I was testing out. I'm like, I wonder if I can do this with a cotton ball. Do a little swirling technique. Have some of that stays on ink or IOD ink, whichever, um, off the ink pad and do a little swirling technique on there. And yep, I, it, it's working for me. Though I might have started off a little bit heavy when I first started on the ink, I'm not worried about that because I know that I can always sand it off. I don't know. I do think that I definitely like it. I'm not going to put any more striping. I want the sunflower to be the main focus, not the green sack stripe. So I just wanted a little bit of something to fill that black blank space. And as you see, then I, when, as I'm distressing with some 220 sandpaper, just to take that away that it's not overpowering that sunflower, there's actually striping in the material itself. Now my next process to finishing this up is those little wire baskets have a place that you can put a little label in it. So I went to my computer and just printed out some simple number one, number two, number three. Now that was the easy part. Now getting them to fit into these little hmm, holders wasn't quite as easy. I'm trying to measure them into this shape, but what I ended up having to do is just keep cutting one individually because they were really clamped down on there. I guess they were just supposed to be for decorative purposes only, but I really wanted to have some wording in there. Then when I took it out into the workshop, I didn't want them to slide around, so I'm just going to use a little bit of the Starbond glue and each one a little, little bit of dab just to make sure that it stays in place. And I'm just putting back on the same original hangers that came with this piece. Um, you, It would be nice just to put a center mount, but because you might put something that's heavy in those little baskets, I, you didn't want it to tip over. So, yep, the two hanger system it is. Now I actually just let these dry overnight, but you, you don't necessarily have to. You just have to make sure that they're dry. So I'm just taking an emery board and removing, letting it sand off that excess decoupage paper. And then I'm doing the field test, feel test, and like, oh, where's the little hole that I can screw the knobs back on? Yep, I found it. So, yep, just getting these knobs back in place. Now, before I can pick out a new knob for this little drawer, I have to seal that transfer in with something. So, I'm going to be taking these outside and getting them sprayed with a nice coat, a couple coats of this clear coat. Then I will be finishing all the pieces off with just a nice, another nice coat of Verithane finishing wax. That's just going to make sure that, that all that chalk, chalk paint is one sealed in and it's just going to give it a nice soft finish and it's protective. And then I took this little cubby box out after it was dried and went to my stash. I do have a little bit of a stash of knobs. I can't pass them up when I see them when I'm out thrifting. And so I'm just trying to find center because I filled that hole in. So I'm not going to be able to find that little feeling of where the hole was. So, yep, just centering it, finding a hole. I had this little porcelain knob that you just screw in just like those other from the three little cubby holes.
Okay guys, so what did you think? I know these were just, they're medium sized pieces, but they are pieces that resell. So getting them fixed up, getting them painted, you just do what you like. So that's what I was doing with these pieces. I was in my stash. I was trying to use up what I had. So do you all do that? I, you know, I, I'm like, hey, before I buy any more transfers, I gotta try to use what I have up. Just cost efficient, especially after having the garage sale and doing inventory control. Sometimes you just need to reassess what you have. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, give me a quick comment of what your favorite item was or a tip. I love that we all share tips with each other. And if you are new and checking out our channel for the first time and you like this kind of content and you want to become part of our YouTube family, just hit that subscription button along with the notification bell. And we'll see you next time, guys.